you know, if I can say we're growing at this rate per month, we've got this many customers, uh, as opposed to we want to build a tech platform. Can we're you burning, give us money we're to burning, do it? We're burning, we're <laughs> burning, please yeah, help us, yeah. right? Uh, and so, yeah, that, and that's kind of went around knocking on doors after that and started um, yeah, trying to raise money for Midnight Health. How do you think you balance, uh, you know, you, you literally just said um, you wanted a, bit, uh, a stronger story before you went to them, right? Because you wanted a, a track record. You wanted some rungs on the board. Um, What's your advice to to entrepreneurs on on you know do they raise when they first start if if they don't, if they need the capital of course but what's your sort of you know what's your position on raising? Uh, I think it depends on what your end goal is, and I think it depends on the type of business that you're starting. Mm. Like if you have the ability to hold off for as long as possible and raise capital, but not to a point where it's detrimental to your growth, mm. uh, then I think hold off. Like get get a stronger proposition as you can before you raise money. Sure. Um, so if you can get profitable growth, if you can build more of your technology, uh, anything that you can do to create a better story to raise capital with, uh, I think you should do that bef before you go and raise. But again, as I said, it depends on how big you're trying to grow. You know, if you've got big ambitions and you're trying to build a, a huge game-changing product, then uh, you know, don't be afraid to go and raise money, as, money as quick as you can. And um, you know, some entrepreneurs get too caught up in dilution. Uh, but I'm like, you'd rather, you know, you'd rather have a small percentage of something huge and keep raising money and chase the big vision that you've got as opposed to hang on to it and take another three or four years to actually get any traction. Mm. Um, so, yeah, at the end of the day, raising money in in most cases is about building the story around your startup. Uh, and so the thing that you need to focus on, uh, what are the what's the next goals or the things that I need to tick off for my business to create the best story to go and raise capital with? Mm. Uh, and I think that's... The other mistake that some entrepreneurs make is that they spend a lot, especially in those early days, they spend a lot of time chasing things that don't actually help them with that capital raise, don't actually help with the story. You know, maybe mm -hmm. if you're a B2B platform or SaaS software, it's like the more clients you have on board, you know, that's the story that you want, right? And so, you know, founders spend a whole bunch of time running around doing all these like more meaningless things in their business because they're busy. And they're not focusing on the thing that will actually help them go and raise more money. And so if your goal is to raise money, just do the things that will help you get there. Which ultimately is generate revenue, right? Yeah. Generate revenue or, you know, let's say if you're in health tech, right, you know, maybe it's actually get a clinical trial done or, <coughs> or maybe it's, you know, something to do with your tech. Maybe you're trying to build a database that you can, uh, you know, start showing health outcomes for. Or, mm. um, you know, if you're an e-com business or a SaaS business, it's like, you know, Maybe it's entirely based on either leads generated or revenue generated or customers. You know, that, sure. at the end of the day, that's what that's what an investor is going to want. Mm. They're going to want to go. How can I put this much money in and get more money back out at the end of it? Mm. So I'm, I'm, you know, having sold your first business, I'm sure you entered this second business with so much more confidence. Uh, like you had the sort of playbook. You started, you founded a company, all the way to exit. You knew you could replicate it for the second one. True. Yeah, so that's interesting in itself. Um, I mean, firstly, before that, I'd actually had started a bunch of different businesses before Search Factory. Okay, that failed miserably. Congrats! Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> but they all came with the 2008, 2009. That was two years for me of like trying to start a bunch of different online businesses that didn't work. Right. When I look back now, some of them were right ideas, but I did not have the experience to actually execute any of those. Sure. But I learned so much through that period, mm. and so I then applied some of those learnings to when I launched Search Factory, uh, and you know, and then had more success with that business. Uh, and then you learn a whole bunch more again. You know, you've scaled one business to exit. It's like now you've got more of a playbook and and more um, you know lessons that you've learned and have applied that to Midnight Health, and that's certainly helped us to get to where we are today. Mm. But again, now I'm learning so many different things in Midnight Health as I'm scaling a different type of business. Mm. Uh, so now there's a whole bunch more lessons that come. But uh, I think you learn. Yeah, it's like a long-term journey, right? Mm. If you're if you're an entrepreneur, you spend many a years, potentially, you know, multiple different businesses that you're going to apply your skills to and get more knowledge from. So, mm. um, I came into Midnight Health with a lot more confidence because I felt like I had a better framework for launching a business. Um, but there's definitely a few areas where I underestimated how hard it would be. Again, uh, raising capital is one of them. Right. Uh, so, you know, I thought I've got a track record. I've sold a business as well. I've also got a network I can go out to as a starting point when I want to raise uh, capital for Midnight Health. Mm. But uh, I tell you what, it's a hard slog. <laughs> Raising money is definitely a hard slog. So And it's uh, painful. Yeah. It's painful. Uh, the amount of no's you have to uh, deal with before you get to a yes. Yeah. How many? Uh, 73 officially. You counted them. Yeah. I've got a, <laughs> I've got a sheet. There's 73 official no's and wow. a whole bunch more ghostings. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the the 
tally of no's that I've got from our first couple of days. All right. How do you love that? That's brilliant. And, you know, that's every entrepreneur starts off that way, right? But every no gets you one step closer to a yes. Yeah. How did you collect this list for people that are looking to raise money? Um, yeah. How do you get that sort of hit list of who to, who to reach out to? Uh, look, a lot of it is just researching. Mm. Like just, you know, Airtree uh, actually have a really good uh, mm. list of you know potential investors that mm -hmm. you can start with. If you're a founder, jump on there. There's a list database of people that you can already start with. It's brilliant the resources Airtree offers. Yeah. They've got great resources. Yeah. So that's the best place to start. It okay. saves you some of the research that you need to do. Good shout. Um, but the next step is to uh, then start having a look around your industry and who's investing in businesses in your industry as well. So one of the challenges with raising capital is the first 10 minutes of most of your conversations are trying to understand what their mandate is and whether your business fits with that. And a lot of venture capitalists or uh, you know investors are not great at surfacing that before you make sure. contact with them. Sure. Uh, so you know you get in the first call and they're like, okay, we well, invest in businesses that are have this run rate that we can get this percentage of equity in that are in these three industries. industries yeah. Sometimes your first ten minutes you go, okay, we don't fit. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> uh, but often they'll be they'll happily refer you to someone else too. Right. So you know they're they're Still all have got, the a, combo. got a network of people, right? Tell them all about yourself. Tell them what you're doing, uh, because that person might not invest in your business, but they might refer you to four other people who could. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and, and outside of you know finding those resources and, and just hunting online, like the reality is, it's just a hustle of contacting people. You know, some I would find a uh, VC company sometimes in Australia, sometimes in America that I felt fit we might fit with their mandate. They've invested in similar businesses. Sometimes I'd hunt LinkedIn and message like 10 different people from the same company. Mm. Uh, quite often someone will respond. <laughs> mm. So, you know, you have to understand that a venture capitalist's role is to try and see all those deals. They'd rather see a deal and pass on it than to have never had it come across their table. Absolutely. Uh, and so most people that I've reached out to that I've spoken to, you know, from an investment landscape have always been really receptive, mm. always been open to a conversation, keen to hear about what we're doing. Mm. Um, some of them are still you know, keen to follow our journey for a few years time. One of the firms that I've spoken to said they take an average of seven years to invest in a company. Oh, wow. But they write minimum check sizes of like 50 to $100 million. Yeah, they must. Yeah. So You're operating um, for seven years. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's the other thing, like try and speak to as many people as you can, because sometimes you might not suit at seed stage, but you might get a series B or series C, mm. and then you can go and talk to that person who's been following you for the last five years. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a list of uh, people that have told me, come back to me at this point. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I'm waiting for those checkpoints to hit them up. Yep. Uh, and and that's that's the way you got to be. The best way to build trust with an investor is tell someone tell tell them you're going to do something, and then actually going and doing it. Yeah. So you know you say okay, I'll come back to you at ten mil rev. Actually coming back to them, it's like you know you've proven yourself. Yeah. You know you you've, you're already separating yourself from all the other people that are selling a dream. You've gone and and, and produced something. Yeah. Love hey, that. Yeah. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, feel free to watch more of them by clicking here. And if you want the full podcast, click here.